Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video is gonna be for those who are just getting their Catalyst suit in or you're interested in Catalyst. Let's go over some of the initial basics here and learn what we need to know about the suit to get the best out of it. If you end up getting a suit, uh, be sure to use my coupon code AustinAfter40. I want you to be able to discount the suit as much as you possibly can. Okay, first off, I wanna get this out of the way. I'm, I'm kind of tired of tiptoeing around what the suit can achieve. You will be able to get the same muscle building, weightlifting kind of results with the suit as you would get in the gym. It really depends on how hard you push yourself in the suit, just like it depends how hard you push yourself in the gym. And you will achieve these results in 20 minutes, okay? One-tenth the time as you would spend in the gym multiple hours across multiple days. Secondly, you will achieve greater strength gains in the first six to eight weeks using the EMS suit than you will be able to achieve anywhere in remotely the same time frame as you would get in the gym. If you're an athlete and you're not using EMS in your training, you are at a disadvantage and you are not unlocking your potential as an athlete. Power lifters, kind of work to increase their mind-muscle connection more than say bodybuilders do. Because they're trying to get the maximum amount of muscle fibers used in their lifts to achieve what they want to accomplish. You can achieve this with EMS. Your neural pathways to your muscles will increase to the point where you will be much stronger after six to eight weeks using EMS than you were before. Okay, disclosure, I'm not a doctor. I'm just the guy on the internet who's really into this stuff and learning a lot about it. I'm becoming pretty knowledgeable on what Catalyst will do. That being said, I'm probably pushing ways to use the technology past what is intended. So talk to your healthcare professional as to whether this is right for you if you have a unique situation, but Catalyst has been approved by the FDA for home use. Finishing that up, look through my comments. Anybody who's bought the suit has absolutely loved it. I have not talked to a single person who is unhappy with their purchase or the suit is not achieving what it says it will achieve. You can get everything that you want to get out of the suit. It will push you really hard if you want it to push you hard. It will give you easy intermediate workouts if you, that's what you want as well. The suit is really dynamic. It really can be exactly what you want it to be with the cardio settings, with weightlifting, with training your fast twitch muscle fibers. It's extremely cool. Okay, undersuit. I recommend watching my suit up video. There's a lot of stuff that I go through in there about the order in which you should be tightening up the strap pads, how to wet down the undersuit the way I do, which is jumping in the shower before I put on the main suit, how I wet the pads down a little faster than what, than what they show in the intro video where you're pressing the sprayer into the pads. If you don't wanna jump in the shower and you're still having some issue with conductivity, which I would say try it with wetting the suit down, wetting the undersuit down first and wetting the pads down. That should be your baseline for how the suit feels. If you just wet the pads down later and you're noticing that the suit is less comfortable to use, it is because of a conductivity issue. It will still run uh, and it's not necessarily doing anything wrong. It's just a lot more comfortable if the conductivity is proper. Now, quick tip. If you don't wanna jump in the shower, you don't really have access to a shower to wet down the undersuit before you strap on, you can spray with your spray bottle directly onto the undersuit where the pads would go. So it's easy enough to just spray where the bicep goes, spray where the tricep pad goes, right? Spray your back down, spray your chest down, spray your legs and your glutes. It's really easy, uh, just do it with the spray bottle instead. Also, quick tip if you're on the road and you forgot your spray bottle, Take a regular water bottle, poke holes in the cap of the lid, and you can wet down the pads just by squeezing the water bottle as you're pressing this into the pad. It will wet the pads down really fast, really easy. Last thing on the undersuit before we move on. You cannot wear underwear under the undersuit. Don't wear a bra, don't wear a sports bra, don't wear underwear, thongs are okay, guys. Banana hammocks, it's the only legitimate time where you should ever think about wearing one. Uh, also, if your wife bought you lingerie, make sure that the elephant ears don't go underneath the quad pads. It will affect conductivity. Okay, let's move on to the app and how to get everything going. Okay, first things first. If you have more than one suit, create a different account for each user. The membership is tied to the impulse pack itself it's not tied to the account. 
So if you have a spouse or a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, who also has a suit in and is using this and you guys are using the same impulse pack, you can create a separate account for each user and then it will save all the settings for the workouts and the suit within each account. So that's a, an awesome way to do this. So then when your wife goes to use the suit or your husband goes to use the suit, he just logs out, logs in under his own account, and then all of their settings from their last workouts, all their workout history, all of that stuff is saved in that account. You want to pair this impulse pack while the app is open. Do not pair it from the settings screen within the iPad. That will cause a lot of issues. During your workouts, it'll become disconnected. All sorts of problems will happen. Make sure that you pair the impulse pack, and by, by doing that, you hold it down, and it goes from slow flashing to fast flashing quickly, right? And then you want to pair from within this app. You won't be able to do a strength workout or a power workout unless you set the muscles or cardio, unless you set the, the individual muscles for each of the different sections. You just do that. If you need to do it for the first time and it's not automatically do it, you go to manually adjust training intensity. So this, once you get into setting the individual muscles, this is what you're gonna see. At this point, you can, you can manually adjust the global setting, and this is what I would recommend, until you kind of start feeling tingles a little bit everywhere. And so at the top here, it's white when the, when the impulse is not going, and it's red when the impulse is on. So I'm not feeling any impulse right now, and now I'm gonna feel impulse. Now you're gonna switch to this button here gives you adjustment of everything. I kind of want you to go through and adjust each of these kind of almost in order. And here's what I want, is I want you your muscles to contract, but I want it to flex uncontrollably while I'm relaxed. So now I'm gonna go to every single muscle and I'm gonna dial these up. And I'm gonna dial them up until my quads are flexing. I'm feeling a pretty good tingle, but they're not quite flexed. That, they were flexed, Never mind. My quads are flexing at this point, and that's where I wanna be with my quads. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same thing with my hamstrings. Again, my settings for my legs are gonna be higher than the average. Now, I think there's some correlation with muscle size. There's also a correlation with more fat that you have, the less intense the, the the feeling of the pads. So if you have 5% body fat and you're a bodybuilder, you're probably gonna feel like a wuss when you get an EMS suit because the intensity of the feeling is gonna be a lot stronger. Still, it's not necessarily painful. It's pretty wild to just be standing here and adjusting this stuff and feeling your muscles flex. This is something that will help. I'm disabling these channels as I go so that I can feel each individual muscle without uh, interruption from the other muscle group. So I'm gonna leave those at 140. Now I'm gonna disable them. I'm gonna go to my lower back. And again, these settings are not, it's not how tough you are, if you're a wimp, if they're lower. The settings are gonna be wildly different for every person. It's also very likely that your hydration plays an issue. How much fat tissue you have between the pad and the muscle. How much blood flow you have before you start? Like if if you're cold, right, and you haven't done a warm up, you're not going to have blood through through the muscles. They're not going to be able to handle the same level of impulse as they will when you have better blood flow. This is why, you know, Catalyst is great in that it starts you out lower in the workouts and it almost does the warm up in the workout for you, which is pretty great. So again, you can disable these channels as you go so that you don't have some of the pads overpowering what you're noticing in the individual muscle groups. So arms, I'm going to increase these till my triceps and my biceps are flexing. If you have it adjusted and your biceps are flexing but your triceps aren't flexing yet, adjust it up to where they're both flexing. So now I'm not feeling any impulses because I assume you could see it, there is a line through each of these. To get out of the workout or any screen, to pause it, you just touch the screen once, it comes up, hit pause, I'm gonna hit end workout. It's going to save all of your settings at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna hit quit. Now my settings in strength are saved. Say full body blast, I say begin workout, it's going to link up. All these channels are deactivated, so I need to reactivate all of them. And this is something you should get used to. I think you're going to like being able to disable and enable channels. So I'm gonna start the workout. You see how in the beginning of this, 
It's showing you what exercise you're doing right there. It's showing you how many reps left of that exercise. It's showing you the total amount of time left in the, the workout. Your plus and minus buttons. You can only raise your level while you're in the workout. If I pause this, okay, I can no longer raise my level. See how this, this number 70 right here, it's not going up, but I can lower it. This is so that I can't pause the workout and then raise up the levels to the point where um, all my muscles are flexed and I can't move. Most of you, especially in the beginning, are not gonna be getting to the levels where you're starting to freeze up, but eventually you want to be kind of 90% of where the level would be where you would start to freeze. You wanna be like 90% of that. That's gonna start really hitting the muscle pretty hard, and it's also gonna be training your mind-muscle connection, which is going to increase the neural pathways between your muscle and your brain. Okay, these instructors are phenomenal. They're gonna walk you through the workouts. It's great, I love it. Workouts are exciting, but you see how this is raising up at the bottom. It's going to raise up to my starting level. I did lower body the other day, so I'm gonna disable and my glutes, and my hamstrings, and my quads. Okay, so while this workout is going, something's pretty strong. I want you to hit pause and then come in and adjust things down from within the pause screen, okay? Because especially in the beginning of these exercises, when they're ramping up your levels to get to your starting level, this can be pretty intense. You can come in and start to adjust, say my upper back, I can adjust this down from the pause screen. So in this first two to three minutes of the workout, if you're not getting, like if your middle back's not getting tired or your chest isn't hitting as hard as you want, you need to adjust it up while the workout is going. And I recommend doing that kind of at multiple points through the workout. Okay. If everything feels easy, I would adjust it from what I call the global screen, which is when it's adjusting everything at once. Okay, so if you want to adjust the upper body, you can adjust just the upper body. If you want to adjust the lower body, you can adjust the lower body as a whole. Okay, if I want to adjust the arms, obviously I can just adjust the arms. So as you can see here, this line that goes up, and it's hard for me to keep my fingers steady as this suit is, is turning on and off, this trend line is going to go up. That's because the trainer is adjusting the suit as I work out to increase the levels that I'm working out at, which is absolutely awesome and I love it. But if you don't want the trainer to be adjusting the suit, that is what this button is right here. Now watch this, this red line and the white line. Watch that as I hit this. So you see the red line just switched to being straight across. Okay, that means that it, it, I just disabled trainer suit adjustments. My level here will stay static. It will be unchanging as I continue on my workout. I can still adjust up as I want and adjust down as I want. Again, if I pause the workout, I cannot adjust up. This entire program is set up extremely user-friendly. I love it. Everything's great. The way the app is laid out, I used to be, you know, I was a computer science major in college for a couple years. I cannot stress enough how well that this app works with the suit. This kind of level of development in an app is like, like an Apple product working with other Apple products. It just works, you don't have to worry about it. It's pretty awesome. So he's gonna, his next exercise is gonna be his lateral lunge, okay? If you do not like the exercise he's doing, do not be afraid to do an exercise that you like better. There's no reason that you know if you're if you're wanting to really work on lower body and you're doing an exercise and he's doing a bunch of upper body stuff then throw in some just standing squats okay there's no reason to not switch up an exercise if you don't like what he's doing okay so once you've got your suit on something that a little side tip that that I kind of find is helpful is if you sometimes this can hang out here and catch on you there's not a whole lot you can do about these but what I find with this is um, I twist it once and put it back on and it tends to keep it tucked better to the body. Okay, another thing, like how high do you want the levels? If I'm doing arms, I want to have a full range of motion. I wanna be able to start here and I wanna be able to go through the full range of motion. What that's doing is it's training the muscle from, from all the way extended. So say for instance on my bicep, that's training my muscle from all the way it extended all the way through the range of motion. What also is very important that you're doing, not only you're getting hypertrophy and, and muscle building 
without getting too scientific, the neural connection, the, the, the connection between the mind and the muscle is growing through the entire range of motion. So if I do an exercise like this, am I gonna get some hypertrophy? Yes, I absolutely am. But my strength and my mind-muscle connection is not going to get the development it's going to get if I go through the full range of motion. Okay, expanding upon that. When I'm working out with people in the suit and I'm showing them what the suit does, if I see them going like this when they're doing the exercises, I know that the suit is set way too low. You should feel resistance. You know, you should still be able to do it, but if it gets too easy, if you're just going through the motions, your suit is set too low. Now that's not necessarily saying you need to dial everything up to where your legs are frozen as you're trying to do your, your biceps and your triceps. But if you're, say if you switch to an arm exercise and you're going like this, you should really select the arms and dial those up to where these become more difficult to do. Now on the flip side of that, if I can't get my arms extended past this point because I've dialed the suit up so high, you probably should dial it down. Or if, you know, if you're really pushing yourself hard, then try to get down, then the rep's done. So now you're starting down here and you start the next rep and you do your bicep curl and you do your extension. You might be able to get it fully extended. It's sometimes good to push yourself and work through that. You shouldn't be running the suit to where you're frozen up. You should be running the suit it's say 90% of that once you start to become more advanced, you'll really start to understand what I'm talking about. You want to struggle against the suit during the reps. You want to be in that area to get the most hypertrophy and the most strength. Hypertrophy just means muscle growth. It's the tear down of the muscle that you get when you work out and then the soreness is you rebuilding the muscle afterwards. I would not recommend working out while your muscles are still sore. They are still in the rebuilding phase. It's probably okay if you do it once or twice over the course of six months. Um, what you're going to find is A, you have decrease in strength. You can't go as much in the suit. And then B, you're going to start damaging muscle that was in the process of rebuilding. So you're kind of defeating some of the benefits of the suit if you're working out when you're still sore. If you've never worked out with weights before, it is really easy to forget to breathe. When you're in the gym and you're just doing arm curls, your entire body is not under, under tension like it is in the suit. What I recommend is to either start the reps breathing in or breathing out. Okay, it's gonna force your breath to, to take action. Now, I don't think this is gonna be something that you're, you're gonna have to worry about after two or three workouts. It's more that you're, you're so overloaded with, with stimulus, the newness of the suit, you're so excited, it's flexing all your muscles that literally you're gonna do something as stupid as forget to breathe. Okay, in your first workout, feel free to take it easy. You don't have to push it to where you're you know, going crazy. If it's too easy, then feel free, you know, ramp it up. Later on, workouts two, three, four, if you're not feeling tired, if you're not sweaty, if your muscles aren't extremely fatigued when you're done, then you need to be dialing it up. You're taking the time to get the suit on. You're taking time out of your busy ass day. Get what you need to get out of the suit. Work out hard. If you need to take breaks, take breaks, but hit the suit hard. You will get muscle gains. You will get increased metabolism to lose weight. You will get all of these things. You're not gonna get these things by just letting the suit kind of flex and you're just kind of going through the motions. It is a lot like the gym in the sense that if you go into the gym and you put, you know, if you put that, leg extension machine on 20 pounds and you go through and do 20 reps, but you could do 500 more reps because it's just too easy, you're not gonna build muscle there either. So you need, you're gonna get the results out of the suit correlative with the effort that you put into the workouts. As you start to become more advanced, watch more of my videos. There's really ways that you can push yourself in this suit and get better results than you'd be able to get in the gym with less time. There, there really is, that the technology is there, the suit's capabilities are there. Now you just have to put the effort in. It's only 20 minutes, go hard. It's not like you gotta do an hour workout in the gym five days a week and you gotta dedicate all that time. It's 20 minutes a week. Just buck it up, hit it hard, and get after it with the suit. Okay, last thing, if you're feeling discomfort in some area of the suit, it's because the conductivity between the pad and your body is poor. That could be because of water. It could be because of fitment. Uh, a big one is the chest. You don't have these shoulder straps strapped down tight enough. So say in a girl who has, you know, there's breast tissue there, right? the way that the, the chest pads fit against your body might not allow that chest pad to fit perfect, right? Um, I think most girls are able to 
adjust the straps and, and adjust it to where you can get good fitment and get good compression of the pad against that area. But I know for me, chest can be an issue. I'm trying to dial the chest up pretty good because I want to get a good chest workout. And at certain ranges of movement, it starts to pull the pad away from my chest. That can be alleviated to some degree by adjusting the straps in different ways, uh, indefinitely in a different order. Like you strap from the bottom up so that when you go to do the shoulder straps, it doesn't pull the entire vest up and pull the rest of the pads out of place. Okay, if you've messed with it, if one of these pads for a while and it's still just painful, just disable that channel. Uh, nothing's more frustrating than, than messing with something for five minutes. Why would you not work out for the rest of the body? So then just, just disable that pad, work through, mess with it next time. If you have any questions about the suit, if you have any questions about the way to use the suit, is it going to accomplish certain things that you want to accomplish? Email me. I answer every single email. I love interacting with viewers. I love the fact that I can answer questions before you plop down thousands of dollars on a suit. Uh, I have not met anybody that the suit is not right for yet. Everybody that I've talked to um, that's gotten a suit absolutely loves it. It does accomplish everything that they, that they tell you it will, that I tell you it will. It is wild what this suit will do. So if you like this kind of content, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, try to do an intermediate uh, catalyst for intermediate users and a catalyst for advanced users. Also, you can watch some of my other videos and check out some of the ways uh, in which I'm using the suit that is outside of what is structured in the workouts. All right, thanks guys. I will see you next time.